Prime Minister Narendra Modi has congratulated India's space agency for launching the heaviest satellite ever from Indian soil using the LVM3 rocket. The Bluebird Block 2 satellite from the US was placed into orbit successfully. Modi said the launch boosts India's space capabilities, supports future missions and also strengthens its role in the global space market. For more on this, I'm joined by Major General Dr. Rajan Kocha, strategic and defence expert. Major General, a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for your time this evening. Why is this such a significant milestone for India's space journey? Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's a, a, a monumental day for Indian history uh, today that... Uh, uh, and such a heavy lift satellite for the first time, uh, 6.5 tons, has been launched into the orbit. Uh, shows that uh, uh, a strategic patience combined with a cumulative advantage, the way uh, India's space program has progressed over the years, I can take you back to 1962, uh, the INCOSPAR when uh, Dr. Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, he was the father of the India space program. He visualized the entire space program of India. Then in 1963, we had the Thumba and then 1975, Aryabhat. So progressively in 1980, we had the SLV-3 launch of Rohini and we had the ASLVs and and now we have the LV M3, M6. So it is uh, one journey, I would say, that uh, uh, from a space-capable uh, nation, India is today a space-assured uh, nation. And uh, it's a, a milestone in our own uh, uh, way. Uh, we have uh, visualized the space program uh, reliability uh, repeatedly and strategic pressure. You see, uh, we, we have gone through all these things. And when you study a space program, you need to understand that you will go through failures also. Uh, we have gone through uh, failures in our space uh, program, but we have uh, not been uh, deterred by this. So I think uh, from this strategic perspective, if I can say, uh, the LV M3, M6, uh, uh, validates India's uh, position across the uh, three core pillars of space power, uh, that is access, uh, sustainment, and influence. So it is becoming extremely important uh, today in uh, today's uh, uh, scenario because space uh, technology and space warfare are uh, going to uh, shape the uh, future uh, uh, you, you know, strength of a country and from that point of view, I think it's a, a culmination of a, a civil military fusion because this space satellite capability of launch is going to help us in our military uh, dominance over our adversary as well as the commercial aspects because uh, you, you see the communication aspects we are talking about uh, 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 are uh, actually... Uh, a mobile unit communication or a satellite communication augments the mobile communication. We are talking about 5G, we are talking about 6G. From where this capability comes, it actually comes through the launch of these uh, satellites. Ma so I Major General, actually, I wanted to ask you a little bit about what you're talking about and connectivity. And I wanted to talk to you about this because AST Space Mobile was the company behind the satellite launch from India. Is this really a threat to Elon Musk's SpaceX connectivity program? Because this seems to be what India is trying to achieve. Uh, see, we, we are not into competition with Elon Musk or anybody like that, and we don't want to threaten anybody in its own this thing. It is uh, basically a convergence of uh, interest because Elon Musk has also come to India today. Uh, 
you know that he has brought in the technology and he's collaborating with our uh, telecommunication company. So I think it is, uh, we, we are not into uh, a competition or to tell uh, Elon Musk that uh, 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 you can be uh, you, you, you know, aside and you know, India is, uh, uh, has the technology now to do it themselves because you, uh, all these uh, space uh, technologies when we talk about it takes time and uh, these actually commercial uh, innovations it will take time to fructify into uh, the things on ground so i don't think we uh, have a competition with elon musk as of now but yes in a long term when we talk about long term capability a time will come that uh, we have been speaking this word Atmanirbhar Bharat quite often in our country and uh, this is the message which must go also uh, to the world uh, that in times to come India is going to be Atmanirbhar we may not need Elon, uh, Elon Musk in the near future uh, uh, today we need his technology we need his capability to uh, further our satellite communication but in times to come I tend to agree with you on your assessment that in times to come, I think we will develop our own satellite communication, which will have a space a governance ecosystem because ultimately it boils down to having an ecosystem within your own country. And I think that is a strategic inflection point we are talking about here. And Major, and Major General, just quickly, apologize, we don't have much time left, but I just want to ask you, what are some of India's main choke points when it comes to the future of its space sector? What difficulties is India going to face? See, the, there are two, three aspects as far as the choke points are actually concerned that one is the choke points in terms of technology because we need to develop that kind of technology and the choke points actually relate to research and development because the actually amount of money we spent on research and development, I think, uh, should undergo a change because the more you spend money on research and development, the more you will be able to get the uh, technology and the more you will be able to retain uh, your uh, workforce uh, within the country because our uh, biggest challenge is that our uh, scientists and all these who are uh, highly qualified uh, look for avenues outside India. So uh, and how do we create the ecosystem mm within our own country to retain this talent you know within us i think that is going to be the biggest challenge for us and the second challenge as i actually mentioned is uh, uh, giving i uh, impetus to research and development because unless you give money unless you give scope unless you have the infrastructure for research and uh, development how are you going to have uh, homegrown technology. So uh, these are the two areas I visualize are going to be the challenges in the front of our government. Major General Dr. Rajan Kocha, thank you so much for joining me and Merry Christmas to you.